Guardians of Middle Earth from Monolith and Warner Brothers is a new action real-time strategy game bringing the genre to the console for the very first time. Many people are skeptical as to whether or not a game like this can succeed in the console space, but with the strong lore of Lord of the Rings as its guide, this game seeks to silence the haters. So is Guardians a work of ARTS, or is it just a game that is out of its element? Let's take a look. While there isn't much of a story to Guardians of Middle-Earth, there doesn't really need to be. It's an ARTS, which means the goal of the game is to murder your enemies, destroy their towers, and ultimately take apart their base. All of the characters are based in the LOTR lore, featuring characters you definitely know like Gandalf and Sauron, and including more obscure characters like Hildefans and Agandor. All in all, Guardians features 22 different heroes, each sporting the standard four unique abilities, and Monolith really did a nice job of making each hero feel unique. Some heroes in the same category have similar powers, but ultimately they all work at least slightly differently and follow a very distinct theme based on the hero's origins and special powers. As far as the gameplay goes, let's talk about what sets this one apart. You can play Guardians of Middle-Earth in the standard three-lane format, but if you're into a more head-on game mode, there's also a one-lane option. In addition, you can choose to play against bots, players, or a mixture of the two. One thing the game does pretty well is introducing you to the basic mechanics. The abilities are simple enough to understand and generally seem to combo together in very logical ways. There are some jungle creeps that you can take out for extra experience, but the main thing that sets this game apart from the others is the ability to take over shrines that give your team minor buffs, and the ability to upgrade towers and manually increase the strength of your creeps based on what level you are. Aiming abilities, while frustrating at times when it comes to ranged skills, works well enough that the gameplay flows relatively smoothly, assuming you aren't lagging. The players that are used to other PC-based ARTS games like Dota or LoL may become annoyed with aiming certain powers, as it is definitely way more clunky. As far as balance goes, there are some heroes that seem way more powerful than others. Having the right team composition can stop this from being a huge issue, but at max level, no matter how strong some heroes are, they won't be able to avoid being one-shotted or almost one-shotted by certain heroes' abilities. The game also lacks a lot of depth in that the only thing that you really farm is experience. You don't buy any items or anything similar during the game, so last hitting creeps isn't really an issue, simply being near the action is. This removes a lot of the skill from the early game and also ensures that the games that last too long ultimately end with every hero on an equal playing field at max level, assuming that nobody has taken a positional advantage. This was the part that bothered me the most. A lot of the skill in ARTS games is getting an advantage early and then leveraging that advantage to snowball your power into late game to close it out. Oftentimes, the end game of Guardians drags because all the heroes have reached equal power. The losing team ends up turtling the fight while the winning team very slowly chips away at their base. There is some depth added by including a loadout system for heroes, allowing you to give yourself certain buffs that activate as you level up. You equip your loadout with various relics and gems that provide everything from bonus health, regen, and attack power to unique bonuses for dealing killing blows. Yes, it adds some depth, but you're stuck with one loadout throughout the game, and even still, this is nowhere near as in-depth as the item system in Dota or the items and summoner trees in League. The other major issue I experienced while playing Guardians of Middle-Earth was lag. You'll even be able to see it in the footage if you're connected to a bad host, which happens frequently, you're going to be playing with at least a moderate amount of lag, assuming you don't disconnect altogether. This can be especially frustrating when you've spent a lot of time waiting for a match. <laughs> Guardians of Middle-Earth does a decent job of migrating the ARTS genre to the console. I have to say I did have a decent amount of fun playing it, but with the game working how it's supposed to with no lag, what you have in Guardians is a game that lacks the depth of other similar PC-based titles. If you're a newcomer to the genre, someone that prefers consoles, or just someone that loves Lord of the Rings, you'll probably enjoy this game, but if you're used to playing League of Legends or Defense of the Ancients, then you probably won't want to spend the $15 on this one, especially since the games you're already playing are free. I give Guardians of Middle-Earth 6.5 golems out of 10. For more reviews and general video game shenanigans, be sure to keep it locked right here to Smosh Games.